out and meet the people of Rochdale who you're supposed to represent. Their message was clear. They want Simon Danchuk to quit. Demonstrators outside the 49-year-old MP's office are furious that he's staying put after having been exposed for exchanging a string of explicit texts with a 17-year-old who'd originally approached him to seek work. She said she was 17, so he went all out for it. And when he was questioned about why he changed the subject from a job to sex, I was lonely, I was drunk and I was horny. Is that the sort of thing an MP should be saying? The story blew up after newspaper reports that Sophina Houlihan, who turned 18 over Christmas, had exchanged sexually charged messages with Mr Danchuk, who'd previously campaigned against child abuse. He's saying that it's a mistake on social media, but you don't make the same mistake multiple times, especially in his career. I mean, he should know better. Mr Danchuk confirmed he knew Ms Houlihan was 17, but as it stands, he's broken no laws and retains the support of some in his constituency. There was no question of this. This woman is above the age of consent. Nothing illegal happened. And what concerns me is that are we going back to the Victorian age where women can no longer make sensible choices for themselves? Is that what we are saying? I don't think so. His parliamentary colleagues may be less forgiving. He's been suspended while an investigation is carried out. And adding to the furore are serious allegations from his first wife, Sonia Rossington, regarding drug abuse and psychological mistreatment. Allegations Mr Danchuk has called defamatory and malicious. So when I sat down with Mr Danchuk, there was plenty to discuss. Isn't the essence of sexual exploitation, particularly the kind you've investigated, about older men uh, having power over younger, more vulnerable people? And isn't that precisely what you stand accused of now? No, it isn't, and I can understand people reaching the sort of conclusion that you were reaching uh, based on the tabloid uh, reports, tabloid newspaper reports of what is allegedly have, uh, gone on. The truth of the matter is that uh, uh, this young woman and I uh, had an exchange across a number of months, uh, and then at a very low point uh, in uh, September, uh, when I was very depressed, alone on holiday, uh, there was an exchange uh, of a more intimate nature. Uh, I sent very few messages in actual fact that, 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 that were of an intimate nature. Uh, that's the truth of it. That's what will come out in any investigation. People would ask though, and their first reaction would be, what were you thinking? You knew how old she was. I've been doing a lot of campaigning work around child sexual abuse, uh, and that put me into a very dark place. And so throughout 2015, uh, suffering from depression, at a low ebb in September, uh, I got embroiled in this exchange of e uh, messages that wasn't appropriate and again I apologise for that. Have you apologised to the girl in question? Well I apologise to her via the newspapers and, and if there's an opportunity to apologise to her personally then I certainly will do. Uh, she, she's apologised to me in actual fact and, and sent me a message saying she was sorry for what subsequently happened and, and I'm grateful for receiving, you know, for, for sending that message. You of all people should be most aware of the damage and risk that is associated with becoming sexually involved with people who are very much younger and clearly more vulnerable than you are as a powerful MP? Well, I think we could have a debate about the vulnerability of this young woman and, and there's things that's come out about her background, which, you know, which, you know, the tabloids have been keen to share. The, the, the young woman involved, I've never even met and never even spoken to. So in, in the scale of parliamentary sex scandals, this is a footnote in history. Yesterday, one of um, an ex-wife, Sonia Rossington, um, had huge amounts of uh, diatribe and allegations all over the papers. You know, she said, one of the quotes is, I was completely controlled by him. It was a form of domestic violence without the hitting. I think he never hit me because he was stoned. She claims that you forced her to have sex with her. I mean, these are other serious allegations which suggest questions about sexual propriety, don't they? How do you respond to that? Well, my first wife is obviously very sad and bitter about the relationship that we had. If she had any thought or regard for our two children, she wouldn't have gone into the uh, level of detail for the story that she would presumably paid for in the uh, mail on Sunday. I think it's sad that she feels the need to provide that sort of information. I deny a good number of the allegations uh, that she set out uh, in that newspaper and I'm currently involving lawyers in terms of challenging uh, some of those allegations. Do you, do you um, 
deny that you were a user of marijuana when you married him? Oh, I've been clear uh, in years gone past uh, that I've used uh, illicit, illicit substances. I've made that clear publicly. I've said that uh, on, on a number of occasions. Uh, I'm a working class lad who happens to do politics. That's the reality of it. I have a fairly colourful private life, personal life, as many other people out there uh, do. Uh, compare me to, say, Boris Johnson, who writes for the national newspapers, as I occasionally do, gets a lot of money for it, he, he does, uh, and he has a personal, uh, colourful personal life. But he isn't hauled over the coals quite like I am. Do you think you'll get a fair hearing from Ken Livingston when he and the Labour National Executive Committee investigate your case. What he said most recently in relation to the allegations against me, he's been trying to make some comparison between what I've allegedly done and uh, child sexual abuse, and that's a wholly inappropriate uh, comparison to make, and that means he's uh, prejudicing the investigation. I think uh, he should stay well aware of it. Indeed, I've written to the General Secretary saying uh, Ken Livingston shouldn't uh, come anywhere near this investigation.